Lord, we thank you for your word. We glorify your holy name as we hear from you, O oh Lord. We pray that, Father, we may hear and understand. We may come to the knowledge of the truth. For you are Lord God Almighty. You are Jehovah the Most High. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you can speak to us even this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May we declare the vision together. Want to go? And raise them as faithful stewards. You may be seated. Siya bonga siya bonga siya siya bonga siya bo siya bo siya bonga siya siya bonga siya bonga. The book of Revelation was written sometime around 96 uh, after the death of Christ. In Asia Minor. The author was probably a Christian from Ephesus known as John the Elder. According to the book, this John was on the island of Patmos. After he escaped the boiling oil that, that was intended to kill him. After they've taken out his eyes. So the book of uh, Revelation, it is the encouraging word. Revelation means uncovered. Meaning it gives us a revelation of the secret of the kingdom of God. In the book of Revelation, we see God revealing his heart and hope for the Christians who are going through persecutions. It was very, very difficult when this book was written. It was written to encourage Christians who were really going through persecutions. A lot of them, they were martyred. Now we know as Christians, for us to live on earth is not an easy one. But we know that God is on the throne, is seated on the throne, is in control. We know that our Lord is a sovereign Lord, he sees everything. We know that our Lord knows everything. And he has all power. So meaning all things are possible if he wants to. If he wants to change things. From where we read, it's a song that the elders in heaven, the 24 elders that surround the throne of heaven, the ones that surround the throne of Jehovah the Messiah. It is after they've seen the salvation 
of humankind. When you look at verses 1, you will see there that the, the, the angel came in and announced that who can open the seal, who can open the scroll. The scroll speaks about the title deeds of the souls of men who were, who were changed under the power of sin, which it was the bond of Satan. The Bible says, a question was asked, who can unleash or loose this crowd and open the book? The Bible says, in heaven, on earth, under the earth, no one could stood up, no angels or spirits or any other person. The Bible says it was quiet. And while it was quiet like that, there was a voice. Because then people and those who were there, they begin to cry. They begin to weep. Because there was no one who can save the humankind. And while there was a silence, a voice came out. It says, do not weep. In verses 5, one of the elders said, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the Bible says he has triumphed. He's able to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Meaning the Lord Jesus Christ He's the only one who was able to stand, who was qualified to set humankind from the slavery of sin and the slavery of death and sickness and diseases. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he stood up as a lamb that was slain. And the Bible says, I saw a lamb in the mean midst of the throne and, and, and the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders standing as though it has been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Beloved, we need to thank the Lord that when we were hopeless, when we were changed, we were living as human beings under the power of sin, under the power of demons. Satan controlling us with the power of death. That Jesus Christ came in to rescue us, to save us. Can you say, Lord, I thank you that you saved me? The Bible tells us that as the elders saw all that, they took up their harps. They started to sing a song. And the song they sang, that's, what, that's where we read from verses 9. The Bible says you are worthy 
The song says you are worthy to open the scroll. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He was slain, brutally killed. His blood came out. The Bible says, he have come to redeem us. The word redeem is to buy back by his blood. He paid by his life. The Bible says he redeemed us to God by his blood. In other words, the wrath of God, the way God was so furious about the sins of men, the way God, his wrath was coming and the curses were coming upon the people because of sin. There was no one who can save all human beings. But Jesus Christ said to the Father, I will stand. I will die for all of them. And Jesus Christ came, paid the price that was demanded by the law, that was demanded by God. The Bible says, out of every tribe and every tongue and every people and nation, as we are celebrating Heritage Day, beloved, we are celebrating. We are celebrating Heritage Day in Christ. And when we talk about celebrating, the word celebrating in the Webster dictionary it means to honor an occasion such as holiday or especially by solemn ceremonies or by refraining from ordinary business. So today, we have put aside this day to celebrate our heritage as African people. But Africans who are saved, who are redeemed by the blood, and we are reminding ourselves where we come from as we are celebrating this annually. Now, what is heritage? Her heritage, it's a, cultu a cultural heritage is the legacy of physical and artifacts. That which we, we as a group or as a society, we have inherited from the past generation. But also it's important to note that it's not all legacies of past generations that are heritage. Rather heritage, it's a product of selection by society. We've been, we've been celebrating our songs, celebrating our dances, celebrating our languages. We are going to celebrate our food as well celebrating our clothes. This speaks of where we come from and the inheritance that which we have received from the past generation. 
And we thank in God that according to the scriptures, the Bible says he saved us out of every tribe, out of every language. You see, I'm a, I'm a vendor, but I'm a mixed vendor. My mother was Sutu. <laughs> from, from the tribe of Tsoteti. But also, my grandmother is from Tonga Nation tribe. So I am a mixture of Changan and Venda. And I'm also a mixture of the Sutus. And I married the Tswana. So, at the same time, you can see that Jesus Christ, by his blood, he's able to save a mixture of a human being. They are colored here. You know, by nature, colors are very rough and uh, violent people. But once they are saved, you find people that are very, very nice and soft. You know, you know, vendors and tongas, they don't come together. The vendors undermine the tongas. The tongas and the sutus undermine the tongas. Barbono a pirjuale kamu tanga. A pirjuale kamu venda. Arhula no taba bua mo mo batuane ngoro mo venda. Kuna lele batubane ba change ali di sene. Because uh, batubanki wakatila ete. Mazulu a anyata ada tribes. Barikidi bati iluan. Yeah. So by nature, tribes that are not Christian, they hate each other. But all of us today, we are a family. We've been saved and delivered from spirits that have been operating in our tribes. We are delivered by the blood and saved by Jesus Christ. So as we celebrate, we don't necessarily celebrate some of the things culturally that as African people we used to do. Like some of the clothes in some of the tribes, especially the Zulus, women they will wear and they will leave their breast outside. As Christians, we don't celebrate that. Because that shows poverty. During the time when the Zulus were, uh, the women were, were, were showing their, their, their breasts outside, it's because they were not clothed. Our ancestors were going through poverty as they were coming down from Africa, coming here in South Africa during the time of the Shakas. They were suffering. People, they were naked. So we can't celebrate nakedness and say it's our culture. And that is why I like how as Christians, even as you are celebrating different tribes, 
that, that even the Sunday school teachers, they, they put the, the, the trousers to make sure that at least it looks dignified. So, but in the world, they don't care. They want them the way they are, the way they are so naked and so forth. Now, as Christians, we are celebrating our lives in Christ. As we remember where we come from, we don't elevate our cultures because some of the cultures, it was an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. For example, ancestral worship. Because a lot of a lot of cult our cultural background it relates to ancestral worship. That is why even in, in the marriages there is a time where the the the, the, bro, the groom they have to dedicate themselves to ancestral worship. And so forth. Rekasi celebrates things like that. But we are celebrating the life of Christ, which is a, a new life that which we have received when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Now, Her heritage, heritage, it also means something possessed as a result of one's natural situation of birth. Your birthright, the natural freedom that which we have. Heritage. It's something that which you inherit from the past. We as Christians, we are celebrating our inheritance in Christ. That in Christ, we have a new life, which is called eternal life, the life of peace the life of joy because we have peace with God. We have peace within ourselves. And that makes us to have peace with ourselves as a church. All of us today we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And because of the blood of Jesus now we are able to be free. So we are celebrating our freedom. Our freedom from sin. Our freedom from Satan. So our freedom from witchcraft spirits. Our freedom from going to hell. That today we know our future after death where we are going through the blood of Jesus that our home is heaven we are going to paradise we are delivered and we are free from the power of Satan we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and that in Christ we are redeemed by the power of his cross as we are now children of God we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus out of every tribe we are no longer controlled by the Zulu spirits of anger of violence the vendor spirits of witchcraft the Tana spirit of being vagabond we are saved we are delivered 
from the Sutu spirit. The last spirit. We are delivered. Uhamba, uhamba, abama rapo bana dombi na laba, ubana bafaza bani. Spirits of lust. We are delivered from them. Say hallelujah, I'm delivered. So we are celebrating. We are celebrating the greatness of God. The works of God over our lives and we are we are delivered and redeemed from shameful characters and shameful acts shameful uh, uh, behaviors we are delivered from the covenants evil covenants of ancestral worship and spirits of the dead. Now we serve the Lord God Almighty in peace and in joy. And we are remembering that all these things, of course they are important. They remind us where we come from, but they don't make us to become who we are in Christ Jesus. But we are saying, as Africans, we can celebrate Christ, we can serve Christ, we can worship God in our African way. We can continue to worship Jehovah the way we are as Africans. With we can worship the Lord with our regalias, with our clothes, and, and be proud of who we are and where we come from. At the same time, lifting up Jesus in our lives and making Jesus to be King and Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. And we know that we are saved by the blood. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Bowing our heads and closing our eyes before the Lord. Maybe you are here today. You have come to celebrate with us Heritage Day. But you are not in Christ. Yes, it's nice to dance, to see what, you know, we've been doing. But probably that it just speaks to you based on the background of African Africanism. But you don't understand why as a church we're doing this. Today you have heard the truth. You can also celebrate Heritage Day in Christ. Where you know that you are celebrating the freedom. The freedom from sins, freedom from cases of the law, cases of the world, cases of ancestral worship. I want to pray for people who says, I want to come 
to Christ. I want to be saved. So that even as I live as an African person, I know that I have the God who will be my father. Who will deliver me from ancestral spirits, from witchcraft spirits, from satanic powers. The, the God who will save you, uh, you, save you from hell. That you know that as you live, there is God who loves you who sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross on our behalf if you say Muruti please pray for me raise up your hand wherever you are just raise it high don't be afraid today will be a day where you can be redeemed by the blood I see that hand I see that hand. Is there any other person who's saying, yes, pray for me, Muruti? I want to be saved. I want to be free. I want to have peace. I want to have joy. I want my sins to be forgiven. I'm going to pray for you. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you. You who have raised your hand, can I ask you please to stand up with your feet just stand up with your feet wherever you are God bless you God bless you is there any other person stand up with your feet we are going to pray for you that your life may be redeemed you may be saved you may be delivered God bless you. Stand up, please. Don't sit down. God bless you. Can I ask all of you who stood to your feet, come out wherever you are and come here in the front. We are going to pray for you that Jesus may sanctify your life and change your life and redeem your life. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll wait for you as you come. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Come, wherever you are. If you know you are not saved, come and join these people. Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for the world today. We thank God for all these people who have come. But there is one person here. The Lord wants you to be saved. But you see, your decision is very, very crucial. You have to decide. You are hooked and chained with which doctor spirits you have tried many things and you are here today the Lord is saying there is nothing that can save your life but you need to decide to give your life to Jesus otherwise you will die and go to hell today I hear the Lord says I'm giving you a chance to come so I want you to come 
I want to pray for these people. But the Lord, by His Spirit, He said, I should call you. So please come. We don't want to close you outside. Just come. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, we repent today after we have heard the good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that we may be free. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and set my life free from sin. I pray that you deliver me in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every one who have confessed, who have come today after they've heard your word. I pray that, Lord God Almighty, the work that you begin, you may accomplish it. I pray that you give them wisdom, the spirit of revelation and understanding in the knowledge of the truth. I pray that you help them to grow in the will of the Lord, even today as they have accepted you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, with the prayer you prayed, your sins are forgiven. You are now children of God. We praise the Lord for you because now you belong to the house of the Lord. Now, we want to take you to the, to the counselors that they may speak to you for a few minutes. They will give you literature so that you can read and know the 